First, original Warlock was more of a buffer, um, in that to help out Warlock, you know, you can use, uh, that extra power buffing for the group and everything like that. It's more focused on that. This is a more personal character focus. Um, it's played as, like, you would play a, almost like a mage or a Warlock in, um, WoW would be played, where you have a pet that does a lot of damage for you, um, and really helps you draw aggro, um, so this class is really, really good for soloing and stuff like that, uh, because a lot of the damage you would usually take as a character when you're playing by yourself is actually ignored by you because you have a pet that pretty much is, that permanently is around to take all the damage and do, deal damage for you, even without the, um, extra abilities for it, it's able to maintain aggro on pretty much anything um i can't say that in terms of like for group play because in group play you're gonna have typically have a tank or something like that but in terms of like singling and soloing stuff like that it will pretty much always take aggro when it feels like it and what i mean by when it feels like it the pet is a little wonky um i'm not sure if they totally um they totally designed the class to be played like that but uh it definitely feels a little bit wonky in terms of how the pet himself works. Um, I'll show that in a second, but it's pretty obvious. Like, sometimes he just doesn't attack. Uh, so heading through um, my character. Again, I chose a human. Uh, mostly I chose human because of the um, feats. And I'll talk about that in a second, but I need the extra points for the way the feats work. I wanted to grab some extra feat points, uh, so it became very important. Um... So as far as my base two at wills, I use Dark Style Aura as my level two. Um, I, this is not spammable, um, but it has a nice crit and it has a pretty high damage hit. So I, whenever I get the chance, I can sometimes use this. Um, and because of the way I'm pretty much spamming, like this, where the other class you kind of turn on your um, curse and kind of maintain it being on throughout the entire fight. This class spends a lot of time refreshing your curse, uh, because you have to basically refresh your curse after every ability use, um, which is a little bit annoying, and it makes the class a little bit more difficult, but it's, which is why I can say it's really, it's a really fun class to play, but it's very intensive on what you have to focus on in terms of your rotation, and your damage will suffer if you don't focus on it correctly. Um, I can say that for sure, but I then say that um, overall it's not terribly difficult, it's just something you have to focus on that you typically don't have to focus on when you play a warlock with the other skill path. Um, but yeah, Dark Spell Oral is my may, is my L1, L2 ability, uh, I typically use that just for whenever it's up, it's just a quick crit. Um, excuse me, I just sneeze. No I don't. Okay, I don't know. I'll sneeze maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just how it kind of how it works. Um, deadly, which is what how this class because of constantly having to refresh your curse. Deadly curse is definitely the first um, is definitely the first passive I would use. Uh, so what this does is makes my warlock curse deal damage whenever it's applied to a target that's not affected by my warlock's curse. Now, warlock's curse, greater curse, and lesser curse are not the same thing. What this is specifically refer referring to is your R1 Warlock Curse, um, which is right here. It's specifically referring to this ability, which means when your Lesser Curse is active, is active, this will still proc if there's no R1 Curse on it. So that's why this is so good of an ability. Um, and why I'm, I, I definitely recommend using this overall because of the damage output that it does for you. Um, so the first kind of unique ability is uh, Soul Scorch. So what Soul Scorch does is it spans six of my Soul Sparks in order to deal damage. It does not have a cooldown, um, however it does call six, six Soul Sparks. Now, you gain Soul Sparks for one, attacking enemies with um, Essence Defiler, uh, which is my main at, at will, I'll get to that in a second, but you also gain Soul Sparks every time you crit. So crit for this build is very important, however it's not maximum important, but it is very important to you. Um, so every time you have six soul sparks you'll be able to cast 
uh, so scorch however you want to make sure again this is why I said you need to be constantly focused on refreshing your buffs so that you get the extra damage over time from this ability because this will consume your warlock's curse not your normal curse your warlock's curse specifically and increase uh, deal burning damage over six seconds and it can stack um, I don't know how many times this can stack, however, I can say that you're not going to stack it 20 times in 6 seconds. It's not going to happen. However, you can stack it quite a bit. <laughs> um, the maximum I've gotten to so far is uh, about 3. Um, but you can kind of keep constantly refreshing it. It really depends on your crit and your uh, rotation. Um, and pretty much your RNG, because if you don't crit, uh, then you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> but. Um, as you crit, uh, this is just really easy to maintain and really easy to go through. Um, so your main at will uh, is going to be Essence Defiler. So what Essence Defiler does is it uh, basically attacks your target and then helps you create a Soul Spark. Now, whenever you have a curse on an enemy, it grants you three Soul Sparks on the final attack instead of one. So you only need to cast it one time in total with a curse on it for you to already be able to use Soul Scorch. Now, this curse refers to any curse, which means it refers to lesser curse, it refers to greater curse, and it refers to your warlock's curse. So, you can pretty much use this at will at any time after your first curse rotation, um, but that really depends on once you get your feet points, and I'll talk about those in a second. However, you can really, really maximize this efficiency by just properly using rotation curses however if you're you don't have to worry if your warlock curse specifically is not up as long as a lesser curse is up this will still work um so the first tyrannical curse is my first one i use um tyrannical curse is a lesser focus for me um so what this does is it increases your damage output it gives tyrannical curse uh which increases damage to the target you're doing and it also spreads the damage from that target to enemies around it. Um, this also um, is an unremovable curse which means you can kind of use it uh, at, you can use it as a curse but it doesn't ever come off until the duration on it ends. Um, however I just don't use this as much. I do have it but I don't use it as much in comparison to my other um, daily power. Uh, so Wraith Shadow is my second um, encounter power that mothers my enemies in a sickly mass of darkness, reducing their outgoing damage and dealing damage over time. Additional damage is also dealt on the final tick of this. Um, you may reactivate this reactivate this power to convert the damage over time aspect into an immobilize. Doing so will summon a soul puppet. Now, your soul puppet is your basically your pet. Now, as you get through towards about level 56 is when I got it, um... You will no longer summon a soul puppet because your soul puppet will pretty much always be will always be active unless it dies, which it really rarely dies. It has a pretty decent health pool, so it really rarely dies. However, this still does really good damage, and this is why I said you have to maintain refreshing your curses after every ability you use because this deals extra damage for um this deals extra damage by using a curse, and it has to be specifically your warlock curse. Um, and also, damage is enemy around and the around the main enemy, and reduces the increases the damage that the enemy you focusing will take. Bleh, I said that really, really weird. Um, emotional immolation spirits is the main at will I use, uh, or main daily power I use. Excuse me. Um, so what this does, and it has a really high amount of damage output for. A daily power from what I feel like um so what this does is it summons two spirits around you do I have enough yeah I do cool I can show you that um so what this was that <laughs> so what um so what this does is it uh summons these two extra imp type things around you that attack whatever target you're fighting um and they also grant you soul sparks while they attack things, which makes it really easy for you to generate extra soul sparks, which again makes it easy to free to spam your soul scorch, dealing the maximum amount of damage for it. Um, these last for a decent amount of time. Uh, 
it starts at 15 seconds, but uh, it ends at 20 seconds after feats and everything like that. So it's a decent amount of time, and it gives you a good amount of time to be able to regenerate uh, daily daily powers, and it also just gives you a really nice damage output. Um, and then the last main ability I use is Hatter's Grip, Hatter's Grasp, excuse me. Um, so what this does is it lifts my foe into the air, dealing damage to them and stunning them. If it consumes a war your Warlock Curse, your target is listed for 15% longer, and they take 15% more damage from my Curses and Soul Puppets while they are stunned. Now, the stun part of this does not work on bosses. Um, you cannot stun a boss like that. Um, you can interrupt a boss whenever it's using an ability, but you cannot stun it. However, the damage boost, as well as the um, duration of this, is still important for bosses because it increases your damage of your Lesser Curses, your Warlock's Curse, as well as your damage from your Soul Puppet. Now, your Soul Puppet is going to hit like a truck. He, you're, I'm going to be honest with you, Soul Puppet, when it feels like attacking, hits very, very hard. So this is a very useful ability for that overall, which is why I maintain it, um, why I am so focused on using it all the time. Now, because of the way this class works and the way the feats work, um, and I'll talk about those in a second, you don't actually have to focus too much on AoE. Um, as long as you're as long as your soul puppet is being cooperative, you don't have to focus so much on AoE because he'll deal damage in AoE just by standing around. Um, but it's very important that he's relevant and active at all times, so buffing his damage really helps you out with the AoE overall. Um, and the last passive I use is all-consuming curse. Um, so what this does uh, is anytime I crit, I will apply a lesser curse, as well as this boosts the damage of lesser curse damage by 50%. Uh, so in total, my Lesser Curse damage is boosted by 80% with this build, um, but it just gives me a lot, a lot of damage um, from my Curses, and it just gives me a lot of time to apply this. Uh, so heading into feats, um, I went 2-3-3, or 2-3-2, my bad, excuse me. Uh, so what 2 I went into is Extent Energizing Curse, so anytime I'm attacking something with an at-will that is cursed, I gain... Uh, 12% increased action points. Um, I also grab 2% into maximum hit points. Uh, I don't like being squishy. I know a lot of there's plenty of times and plenty of builds that'll ignore this entirely and just go into the damage. I do not like being squishy. I don't care if it's a little bit less damage. I don't care. I just I don't like being squishy. So the extra 60% is it, pretty much mandatory in all my builds. I don't care. It's just it, it's my playstyle. Uh, and then 3% extra critical strike chance. Um, the next I dig is three. Um, now the way this is gonna work uh, is you're gonna grab three two first, and then grab three two uh, because I'm not gonna grab five or three in either of those. I don't care about less threat, and I don't care about shadow slip. Um, but it's just kind of how you're gonna have to progress because you have to go ten. You have to basically go five 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 five. Um, for how this is going to work. It won't be five for me, for me, for you, because I'm using human. If you can entirely follow my build, I'll be using human too, which means you'll have extra points at level 15 and, or, I think it's 10, 15, and 20. Uh, so you'll get that extra stat points, and you'll be able to progress a little bit faster through this. Um, but yeah, this is how this kind of works, is go 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three, two, and then 3-2, and then 5, and then 3-3, three, three, and then finish the 2. Um... So this gives me 6% increase in counter damage. Uh, this increases my, all my counter abilities just increase their damage by a flat 6%. Um, and then I went with determined casting, which gives me 10% cooldowns. Uh, so it's essentially recovery, but it's basically allowing me to spam my abilities very quick, quickly. Now one of my abilities is always gonna have no cooldown, but the other two do have a decent cooldown. So it's very useful for those two. And then I continued on by grabbing uh, 332 um, so three into crit severity, so for the 15% increased crit severity, and then three into um, Scornful Curse, which increases the damage of Lesser Curse by 30%, as well as the damage of Deadly Curse by 30%. So this is how I really get the extra damage, maximum amount of damage for my Lesser Curse. Um, and then I went two into um, Blood Pact of Kynia, which basically increased the amount of damage that Constitution gives you. Uh, this class is weird for stats. I didn't talk about stats. I'll talk about those in a second. Um, this, this class is weird for that because Constitution is your main stat, however, it's not your class's main stat. It's your main damage stat, but it's not your class's main stat, so it's a little bit weird um, in terms of that. 
Now, um, this is another one of those builds where I kind of went through and then grabbed a whole bunch of stuff in the Damnation pack and grabbed one thing into this. Um, so I'm going to talk about how I went through progression wise and then I'll talk about what I finished up with. So I started out progression wise, I started out with um, Relentless Curse. So anytime I remove my Warlock Curse, which all my abilities in terms of my main rotation uses, um, I uh, automatically apply uh, a lesser curse which allows me to spam out my abilities and maintain soul sparks uh, which are very important for me overall um, I then continued on and grabbed uh, parting blasphemy um, so when a curse is removed from the target I deal 50% of my weapon damage to that target um, so that's just a nice damage anytime I cast or remove my curse it'll just automatically deal that uh, bonus damage um, I skipped this initially uh, because what this all this really does is it boosts the amount of time that my um, immolation spirits are active uh, so it's not really necessary for leveling because you won't get immolation spirits for a very long time however so I just kind of skipped it over it and since this is already 10 points you'll be able to skip over this row entirely and go into the next row which is when I grab Spitfire which um, as I was saying why I focus on single target abilities and don't focus heavily onto AoE target abilities because my soul part puppet will now deal 75% of my weapon damage as fire damage every second to all foes near my soul puppet. So why I said when he's cooperating and he goes and stands next to mobs instead of standing next to you or visually bugging to stand next to you, he will go out and deal uh, the max a whole bunch of damage for you in AoEs, so you don't need to maximize uh, a whole bunch of AoE abilities. And then continued on and grab Burning Puppets. Um, so my Soul Puppet now has a 25% chance to apply Lesser Curse whenever it attacks the target. Um, and it also does 10% more damage to targets affected by Lesser Curse. Now pretty much every target I attack will either, if I crit, I'll have Lesser Curse, as soon as I remove Warlock Curse, I'll have Lesser Curse, and 25% of the time when they attack, when my Soul Puppet attacks, I'll have Lesser Curse. So this is pretty much always going to be active for that 10% bonus. Um, I continued on and grabbed uh, uh, Wrathful Souls. So what Wrathful Souls does is my Soul Puppet now deals 100% more damage, and it attacks types and some of the health to you, um, healing you for 10% of the damage. So this is why I said this class is so good for soloing, because it essentially... Your Soul Puppet not only is going to tank for you, it also is going to heal you while it's tanking for you. Um, so it really is able to really keep you alive and help you balance out and deal the most you can do. Without having to worry about getting hit. Um, and then the last thing I grabbed is Ghastly Commander. Uh, so what Ghastly Commander does is, while I have a Soul Puppet active, I deal 50% more damage. And my life steal is increased by 5%. Since your Soul Puppet is always active, this is always a buff you're going to have, so it's just really, really nice buff overall. I then grab Soul Desecration, which is what I mean by your Soul Puppet will always be active. Now, this basically makes it so your Soul Puppet moves faster, no longer dissipates after 5 hits, and any time a target is marked by my Warlock Curse, it will be corrupted, and if it dies, it will spawn a Soul Puppet. Additionally, every 10 seconds, um, the next time you deal damage, you'll stun on Soul Puppet. Now, if your Soul Puppet is active, this won't work, and it'll just ignore it. However, if your Soul Puppet ever dies, this maintains you not having to ro re-rotate and re-summon a Soul Puppet. Um, that's really nice. The next thing I did is grab, this is when I doubled back, grab Spark Binder, um, for the increased, uh, duration on my Immolation Spirits. As well as getting their, uh, buff to maximum health. And the last thing I finished up with was Critical Sprouts. So after a critical hit, my next attack will also deal 40% of my weapon damage as necrotic damage. So that's how I finished up with my feats and how everything works in, con in uh, tangent with each other. Um, for stats, I went 25, 19, 20. Um, so I went 25 into my damage dealt, dealt output um, for constitution. I went 19 into int, and then I went 20 into uh, charisma. Charisma gives you that critical strike chance, which is important. Uh, Intelligence gives you the defense ignore, which is basically armor pen, and then 25% into constitution gives you the damage output. Um, uh, greater black ice belt, and I'll probably grab a greater black, a greater, uh, greater black ice cloak, and then I'll also finish that with the um, black ice beholder belt. Uh, so what these do is basically just armor pen, uh, but this also gives me constitution and charisma, um, and power critical strength and armor pen. So this just gives me a lot of stats in this floor, is damage boost, as well as basically... Um, it just gives you a lot of constitution, which gives you damage, and then crit, which is from charisma. 
Um, so that's what I focused on with everything like that. So now I'll just go through rotation and that'll finish up this character as far as my secondary character. So uh, the first thing you're going to do, no matter what, is always get your Warlock Hurts active. Uh, so that typically will summon your Soul Puppet and he'll go attack and do whatever. Um, and that's that's your main thing that you have to make sure that you keep constantly using every sign. So you can tell when it's not up because it does that little, that, that burning thing above that thing right there. That is signifying that your Warlock Curse is active. Uh, so it's very important that it's there. Um, and then anytime, so I typically start with that and then I go into Grasp. Um, this expands the curse, deals damage, and then increases the damage that my Soul Puppet does. So it's just really, really nice for that. It gives a really good crit chance. Um, but that right there, the green hen, without the horns, is a lesser curse. Lesser curse just deals damage over time. Um, so it's very nice for that. After I use that, after I use grasp, I go back and reapply my warlock curse, and then I'll use um, that uh, second ability. So that'll just deal its damage. Um, and I typically pop that uh, for the actual maximum damage to it. Uh, which boosts damage. So again, I start with Warlock Curse, pop that, I reapply my Warlock Curse, we pop that, and then reapply that. Uh, so you know it worked properly when it does that big smoke cloud uh, type effect. Um, if this smoke cloud effect does not work, then you did this wrong and you cast this ability wrong. Now you can interrupt the ac and you accidentally um, cast this wrong. If you do not wait for this bar, then you can cast this wrong and it won't work outright. Um, and it'll kind of reduce your damage, so you want to make sure you're using it properly. And then after we're doing that again, um, typically I would have uh, enough soul sparks to be able to use um, our last ability, which is that, uh, which is our uh, soul. What's the name of this ability? This ability, Soul Scorch. Uh, so you, as you can see, Soul Scorch does that little initial hit, and as long as the um, Willock's Curse is up, it also does damage over time. So, that's how the rotation typically works, um, and everything like that, so I'll just run through the rotation real quick. So again, pop that, grasp, make sure that's casted properly, and if I don't have enough Soul Sparks, then I, that's when I spam this, and then be able to cast that. Now, um, now, uh, let's talk about my daily power. This is what I use, uh, so I use... These are what your Immolation Spirits look like. Um, they do really nice damage. And they just kind of stand next to you and deal damage. So it helps you build sparks. And that's how I'm able to cast my abilities so frequently. Able to spam my Soul Scourge frequently. As you can see, I'm really easily generating Soul Sparks. So it's really nice. And they last a pretty decent amount of time. So that's how I wrote through my rotation, everything like that. Um, now, the last thing I want to cover is um, is my trinkets. Uh, for this character, I typically use Charm of the Serpent, um, Sonic Sigil, Sigil of the Controller, uh, Black Ice Beholder, as well as Lantern Revelation. All these will give me crit, crit, armor pen, um, and power and stuff like that. Uh, and a couple of these will give me uh, life steal such as the Charm of the Serpent. Uh, I keep this as the main trinket because this boosts damage. Um, this boosts um, my damage against enemies uh, up to 20% in total, um, and it gives me some life steal, so I'm really focused on that. So that's everything involved with this class. Uh, the last thing I want to cover before I wrap it up for today is my changes to my um, Trickster Rogue, which is my main, uh, but dude, Damn, he's actually wailing over there. It's, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, so this is my secondary. This will be my off main uh, whenever I have stuff on cooldown or don't have anything left to do for the day. As far as my main, this is going to be the character you'll see me play a lot. But um, yeah.